All right, hello and welcome guys. I'm going to turn off my video actually because I'm in a public place right now because champions always adjust. So welcome guys, welcome from wherever you guys are watching this. Firstly, just write on the chat what country you're tuning in from. We wanna welcome everybody. What country you guys tuning in from? I see Dubai in the house, amazing. Indonesia, Holland, Denmark, Sweden, Nigeria, Botswana, Romania. Lithuania, Fiji, amazing guys, truly international group. I'm so excited for this call guys. Really, really excited for this call because today I get to interview not just one person, but two amazing individuals, two people that are literally not just lighting the continent of Africa on fire, but the whole world through their stories. And I'm gonna bring up the first individual, but before I do, here's what I'm kindly asking you guys to do. Literally the information that we're gonna share with you over the next 30 minutes. For some of you guys, when you hear the inspiring stories for these individuals, this has the potential to enable you to make a decision, to make a shift, that will literally shift everything in your business, shift everything in your life. The two individuals that I'm going to bring on, despite the obstacles, for many people, 2020 has been a challenging year. But they always say that a leader is defined by the obstacles that stop them or they overcome. The stronger the leader, the bigger the obstacles they can handle. The weaker the leader, the less are the obstacles that they can handle. In the middle of the pandemic, in the middle of a challenging year where a lot of people have been affected, everybody has been affected to a certain degree. Some people have made the choice of going, it's a tough year, I don't know what to do, hopefully this year passes and it gets better. Some people made the decision that it's a tough year, I'm gonna work harder. I'm gonna make a bigger sacrifice. And by making a bigger sacrifice, well, it's a tough year for many, I'm gonna use it to create history. I'm gonna use it to help impact a lot more lives. And the first individual I'm gonna bring up is someone that I'm blessed to call him a dear friend. He's someone that inspires me. I've met him digitally a couple of years back when I started hearing his story from his mentor, mentor Helen. And she told me about the crazy work ethic this individual had. This guy made such huge sacrifices, traveling to different countries in order to launch teams and support them. And I'm telling you, this guy is the true testament of what can be achieved when ridiculous amount of work ethic is implemented. He has been working hard this year and the last couple of years. He's managed to achieve the level of IMD and now he's going for double IMD. If you, for those of you guys that are new, IMD is the highest level in our company. The average income at IMD is $35,000 US per month plus $3,000 a month towards a house of your choice paid for, $1,500 a month for your car paid for. It's a crazy lifestyle. He's only, he's done it once and he's going for double. And this gentleman right now is literally one of the top producers in the whole world. And his name is Martin Deho. Martin, we're ready for you, my friend. Yes, my sister. Thank you so much for having me here today. A good morning to you. Good morning, good morning, and good evening to some of people because we've got all time zones, all continents plugged into this call, my friend. I'm telling you, I'm so proud of you because I, like, I've been watching you. I've been seeing what 
waves you've created. And what I would love is I would love, Martin, if for everybody to hear your story, when you got started, what did it look like? Some of the challenges that you went through, but more importantly, the journey that you did, especially now in the middle of the pandemic in 2020, what decision did you make this year and you went crazy and now lighting the whole world on fire? Wow, thank you so much. First off, I appreciate your leadership and uh, truth be told, I've always been inspired by you. I have seen you do this in Europe, start markets in Australia and clearly, to me, you've been such an inspiration and honestly, I owe you all this success because if it weren't for you, learning from you, especially building new markets, clearly, I don't think I would be anywhere. But because of you, really, that is exactly what has you know, helped us here on the continent of Africa to be able to build something as well as you know, we continue to learn from you. So, ladies and gentlemen on the call, my name is Ndiho Martin. I am Ugandan and uh, a statistician by profession, and I also hold an executive master's degree in business administration. I am a PhD dropout, and uh, prior to World Ventures, I saw, you know, I was running two businesses, two companies, very successful, and I was literally very busy. I had a very busy life, but again, I was broke. Now, here is what I would do. I would work from Monday to Monday. I would leave my kids sleeping in the morning. I would find them sleeping and had no time for myself at all. Okay. Now, in as much as I was, you know, running these two companies, I wasn't really passionate about what I was doing. But because they put food on the table, that is why I kept on working. And I'm sure most people do the same thing, but, um, you know, they tend to do things they're not really passionate about, but because, I mean, at the end of the day, all you need is food on the table. So you end up doing what you don't like and you end, you know, you wake up in the morning, you're feeling so low, you're not excited, you're not as excited. That is where I was. If that is you, that was me, okay? So when a gentleman got in touch with me on Facebook and told me about this concept, World Ventures, now in the beginning I was very skeptical. First of all, I'm Ugandan, this guy is Kenyan, and he's sending me exotic places on Facebook. And I'm thinking, so what, what does he think he is? You know, um, you know I, I, I just kept him going. I never unfriended or blocked him. You know, that is what any normal person would do at that point. But I just kept him going. So he eventually came to my country and he, he basically came, had come to my country to share the same concept with people that he knew because he had a couple of people that he knew around. So he was here for about two weeks sharing the same and constantly inviting me for his meetings where he was holding the meetings. And I successfully dodged him. Now, at some point, you know, he kept asking for my phone number that I declined. I never gave him my phone number because I thought he would now be such a pain because he was already a pain in my chat, in my, you know, my messenger, Facebook, sending me messages all the time. So I, I didn't give him my phone number. But then... He landed on my phone number through a mutual friend. I don't know how it happened, but you know, he got my number through a mutual friend. And the next thing I'm seeing is a call of a number that I have no clue about. And then he tells me, yeah, this is me from Facebook. I'm like, okay. And I would remember. Um, so now I'm like, now, now that he has my number, he's never going to stop calling me. So the only way I thought would help me avoid him permanently, would be to ask him to come through, share the same with me, and I tell him off. And off he goes, he would never bother me again. That is what I thought. Little did I know he would, you know, blow my mind and wow. So he comes to my office and that very day he called me. He told me which part of town he was and I realized it would take him about an hour or 30 minutes to get to where I was. So I told him, if you can get here in 30 minutes, 
I will see what you're talking about. But if you exceed the 30 minutes, please don't bother because I'll be off. This guy shows up. Even before 30 minutes clocking, the guy was there. I'm like, what is wrong with this guy? But then I decided to pay attention. Well, he told me, yes, it's a um, club that is going to show me. I'm like, okay, fine, show me. And in my mind, I'm thinking, this club is in Kenya at that point. If this club is in Kenya, this is Uganda. Why would he want me to get involved in something in Kenya? So I'm thinking so many things, but then I chose to be open-minded. He pulled out his iPad, uh, did a laptop or something. So he played a video. Now at that time, 2015, we had a 14 minute video. So he plays the video. I begin to watch the video. Five minutes into the video, I was sold. I am looking at happy people. I'm looking at excited people. I'm used to having people crying here, there, what? I'm seeing happy people. And in my mind, I'm thinking, this is where I belong. This is where I should be. And at that point, I don't think I watched all the, everything else, but I, was, I had made up my mind already. Now I was beginning to think of, how I was going to apologize to him should he decide to go away and take the whole thing away from me. You know, so I'm thinking, how do I apologize to this guy? So, well, the video is done and I am thinking this guy is about to walk out. Then he tells me he has some slides that he can also take me through. I'm like, yeah, please go ahead. I'm beginning to like it. I'm thinking, this guy is not about to leave me. He's not taking this thing away from me. So he takes me through the slides. I get to see the business part. I'm like, are you kidding me? So you mean you can do this and also get to earn money? Like, yeah, absolutely. Mm, okay. When he was done, so I'm looking at the gold and platinum. Those were the only packages we had then. I'm looking at gold, I'm looking at platinum. And I told him one thing, you know what? I am in and I am going for platinum. Now, here is the funny thing. He tells me, yeah, platinum, okay. See, he was also shocked because he had met 65 people. 60, he had a list, 65 people, all of them said no. So he but, had gotten 65 rejections. He was then, on the If yeah. I can pause you there for one second, Martin, because I, you've just dropped so many gold nuggets in there and I want to <laughs> highlight this to people, okay? So okay. the, first, the first lesson for this guy so far is the fact that the guy never gave up on Martin. Because sometimes some people, literally, you invite somebody, somebody doesn't show up, doesn't answer your call, and you're like, that's it, they don't deserve to see my opportunity. And that only protects our ego, nothing else. The guy was persistent, he kept on pushing, right? Okay. Yeah. And you essentially went and saw this to shut him up. The second thing is, okay, and I love this, the guy showed 60-something people, everybody said no, but this comes down to the power of one. Literally, how many people would have shown five people, got five rejections and gone, I got rejected, that's it, I'm not going to show anybody else. Or 10 rejections, or 15 rejections. But he got rejected over 60 times, then Martin says yes, and Martin, how many people do you have in your organization now? Oh, wow. Um, I've personally enrolled 300 plus people. I stopped counting at some point. So, but that has gone to a team of over um, 40,000, 40,000, 50,000. So here's the thing, guys, and I'm not telling you this is going to happen to you because obviously the, these results are not typical. But if you got rejected 40 or 50 or 60 or even 100 times, but you knew after the 100th rejection, you might get one who gets one, who gets a few, and now leads a team of 40,000. Is it worth the rejections that you go through? Right? That's what you keep reminding yourself. That gentleman kept on going through it. And Martin, let me ask you something. Because yeah. you have become, one thing that is your work ethic, but the second thing is, is you've also become someone that's duplicated so well and you've got a bunch of IMDs in your team right now, correct? How many IMDs in your team? Uh, four now. Four IMDs right now, okay? And the other thing is as well is 
you didn't have the best start. So you went in, you started showing a bunch of your friends. Did your friends support you straight away, Martin, or were some of them negative? Never. They haven't even joined. My best friends, seven of them, have never joined me to date. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So your best friends didn't join you. Your best friends didn't support you, but you kept going. And it took you, how long did it take you to get to marketing director? Well, um, I got to marketing director, uh, I think it took me over, slightly over a year to get to marketing director because along the way I actually lost, I was director and I was 10 away to marketing director in November, 2015. And then I lost the entire team. Uh, so by December 2015, I had only two people out of 380. So I lost 380, 378, so to speak. And I stayed with just two people, started pay paying my monthly fees again. And January 2016, February 2016, March 2016, then I started landing, getting some leaders to build with. And by May, around May 2016, that's when I hit, I got back my rank, director, then went ahead to hit marketing director, and then a month later, I hit RMD, and so on, you know? And the thing is, I know for some of you guys, especially if you're brand new guys, and you know, you probably heard he built it, and then he lost a bunch of the team, and someone's asking, how come you lose the team? Guys, this is just business. I mean, let's look at this 2020, how many hotels lost a bunch of business? How many airlines lost a bunch of business? I know of supermarkets that have closed down. I know uh, shopping malls that have closed down. Challenges come in many forms, but here's the, th the mindset of the entrepreneur is that the entrepreneur always find, finds a way to overcome the obstacles. And it's easy to call yourself a leader when things are easy, but the true leaders always show themselves when the challenges hit. And this is what I love about Martin's story because when the average people might have built something and then lost a bunch of it and maybe lost some of their income, the average person might be like, hey, this is harder than I thought. The winners think, man, it's going to taste so much sweeter on the other side. Isn't it, Martin? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so what, what, what I would love to hear, Martin, and maybe you can uh, help us introduce Nicholas because um, yeah. the power of leadership getting to a certain level is one thing, but uh, a true level of leadership in network marketing, the first level is when you become a leader and you have followers. The second level is when you start developing leaders. That's the second level. And the third level is when you develop leaders who develop leaders. Yeah. And that's where Martin is right now. Martin is at the level where he's developing leaders who develop leaders and he's impacting countries, continents, and the world. So I would love for you, uh, Martin, if you can share a little bit about how you met Nicholas, how you came across it, how did you know he was the right person to work with? And then maybe if you can introduce him, because I know there's a lot of people on the call right now that I want to hear how this guy did in the middle of a pandemic, IMD in eight months and 20 days. Yeah, wow. So um, in fact, uh, to be honest with you, I was in his country in 2018 and got a couple of people and we tried to build, we tried to build, but I was there for a very short time. Then I had to leave. And, uh, you know, that also taught me a lesson that every time I go to build in a place, it always requires me to give it a little more time to stay quite a bit, you know, for some time in order to get to, you know, uh, get the leaders and get to help them and support them and then leave when they can, uh, you know, sustain the growth, when they can continue with the growth. So I've, I've always done that, but um, every time I went to a market, it exploded, but for maybe a month or two, and then when I left, everything went down. So that's what happened when I went there in 2018. So. 
However, I kept in touch with the leaders there and I would call them and tell them, hey guys, what is going on? What is going on? Then last year in December, in November, I called um, Nicholas's upline, all right? And by the way, my entire team, I've built my entire team on cold markets. All my friends said no, you know, everyone that I know that is close to me said no. So I have built my team on entirely cold market and just building through. So they've become family now. So now, so when I called, uh, when I called that gentleman who is Nicholas Zaplain, uh, November last year, we really had a, a talk, a man to man talk. And I think there's a way, there's a way it shifted his mindset and he literally woke up. Now that is when he started going back to work and he landed on Nicholas on December 21st, December 21st. So when he landed on him, signed him up, this guy invited 124 people in one week. And this guy called me and tells me, hey, I got some guy, he invited 121 people in one week. Can you come over? I said, no way. I hear you. I need to see you, all right? I hear you, I need to see you on. I think I could have gone off for a bit. Fini, can you hear me? Yeah, we got, we got you, Martin. It's all okay. good. It froze for a oh. second, but you're back. All right, cool. So he, uh, I mean, I had that. Then before I knew it, this guy got his four um, around, you know, the same time, December, towards end of the end of December. And then in January, okay, so I'm beginning to see then somehow, you know, he hit senior rep in January. I'm like, okay, this is serious. And then I tell him one thing. So I called him personally and I told him, you need to come to Momentum in Cape Town. He, he, was, he didn't even want to come for Momentum. And I said, if you don't come for Momentum, you're not going to see me. So, so he tried, he will, tell, he will tell his story how he really managed to come for Momentum in Cape Town. But I was there, I, he showed up. And one question, when I met him, I asked him, who else on your team did you come with? He said, no one, I came alone. I'm like, ow, you shouldn't have come alone, but either way, it is fine now that you're here. So I want you to really be in the event, make sure you grasp everything, listen to all the trainers, don't get distracted. You, you come all the way, just get here and absorb everything, then I am coming with you. So he was at the event and um, I, I can't tell, he will tell us what he got out of the event. But after that event, got back home. I personally came home, spent about 12, 14 hours, got on, an, on another flight and off I went to his place. That was end of February. So on March 1st, we had a meeting. So we had a meeting on March 1st uh, with qualified reps. We were about 13 people in a room. And I remember giving my training to them. And uh, I, I got Matt Morris on the call, a video call, showed him around the room. We were 14 people in the room. And I told him, this is it. This market is about to explode. Are you ready for it? And you know what Matt always says? I see more than I hear. I said, fine, let's get it. So. We started on first match. This guy was a senior rep. Now, I will tell you, I scared him. I think, I don't even know what he felt when I told him this, but I sat him down and told him the, the, the longest record, the, the record that has been on for the longest time is 13 years, and this person hit IMD in 10 months and four days. And... So I asked him, are you up for the challenge? Well, at that point, he didn't really know this could be true, but I had seen it. I had seen it. And I remember talking to you about the same around Epo, Efrosini, if you recall. I talked to yeah, you about I remember this you were Epo. telling me that this guy was on track. I remember we had yeah. this conversation and he said, I've got someone that I believe is going to break the yeah. record. And uh, exactly. you did it, you did it. <laughs> Yes, yeah, so clearly what you were talking about now is about building leaders. 
And I was pushing my mind concurrently with him, but I decided to let go of mine and focus on him so he gets the pressure. Trust me, I really put him on pressure. But I mean, it is good pressure because clearly getting to beat this record and then now he is pushing the same onto his team, that is something that I've always wanted. And uh, it is something that is going to help all of us here. So we sat down and I told him, hey, now you can do it and you are going to do it. Are you ready for it? I told him, are you ready to be coachable and teachable and follow my lead so you get there? He said, bro, I am ready. Take me wherever you want to. I said, fine, let's go to work. There's just one way to find out and that is to put in the work. So we started. We moved, we moved. And along the way, I just ha had to abandon mine and just focus on him, focus on his leaders, focus on all the other people. So this is what I would do and what I would advise everyone on this call to do. Sometimes you have people on your team and you just call the leaders, the top leaders. No, you don't have to. Just co go deep down, dig deeper, get, you know, get connected to the people on their teams. As you're supporting them, you're supporting him. It's not about you supporting the actual person, but go deep down and support the others as well because they also raise him up. And as they are raising up as well, you two are going up. So clearly that is what we did. And we get pushing through, director came through, marketing director came through. He will tell us about how all those ranks came through and at what point did they come in. And boom, before we knew it, it was closing in day by day, day by day. And then at eight months and 20 days, this gentleman hit international marketing director. And right now he's working on double IMD and he wants to beat his, rec his own record and also has a couple of leaders on his team who are also pushing to beat his record. It's basically, uh, it's turned out to be a game and we are really happy to play this game. But in a nutshell, we are literally building a foundation because the real game begins in 2021. So at this point in time, please allow me introduce. Yes, should I go ahead and introduce him? Yes, please introduce him. Uh, the whole world is waiting, Martin. Great, great, great. <laughs> so allow me introduce the man of the hour, the gentleman that was a stranger to me, the gentleman that has become family to me. This guy, if if I mean, if being coachable was a person, this is him. If being teachable as a person, this is him. This guy is very humble, very down to earth. This guy would do anything to support anyone, regardless of what team you are. He doesn't care whether you're on his team or not. As long as you are in our family, you, you belong to the Blue family, this guy would do anything to support you. This guy has taught me a lot. I've learned a lot from this guy. This gentleman is one of those people I have a lot of respect for. And I know for a fact he's going to inspire millions of people globally. So please, ladies and gentlemen, allow me to introduce to you the legend, the man himself, the myth, Mr. Nicholas Eko de here. My brother, are you on the call? I am, I am indeed. Wow, oh, Martin. Love. Let's show him some love. <laughs> oh, thank you, my brother, my friend, my mentor. Thank you. Thank you for that amazing introduction. And uh, thank you for all that you have done and all that you continue to do, not just for me, for my team and for many, many millions around the world. So good morning, um, Efrosini. I really appreciate you. I know we haven't spoken but i have heard a lot about you you really inspire all of us you know you are the true legend thank you for the opportunity to be on this call and uh, good morning to everybody else who is on this call my name is nicholas and i'm super excited to join you this this uh, morning it's a rainy morning for me but i'm sure maybe it's afternoon or evening or night you know but we're one family. Thank you for the opportunity, Efrosini. My pleasure, Nicholas. The world is looking forward to hearing your story. And you're definitely such an inspiration for everybody because you're a true example of showing people that 
when some people say that it cannot be done, some people say, watch me, I'm gonna do it anyway. So we'd love for the world to hear, Nicholas, a little bit about what was life for you like before World Ventures and what made you say yes to this opportunity? All right, okay, so <clears throat> I, professionally, I'm a policy advocacy expert. And so what I have done in the last six years has been to hold conversations on policy issues. And so I organized fora with members of parliament in my home country and with government officials, with Ministry of Finance officials, and uh, mainly to, to ensure that government policy is being shaped by research. That's the work I have done in the last uh, six years. Before that, I was in, um, I was in management consultant. So uh, you could say I was in a good job. <laughs> you know, I have two master's degrees. So yes, I've been to school and um, for anyone in my position, um, many would see me as lucky and many would see me as successful and many would see me as happy. But the truth of the matter is that I was not happy. Um, I felt a certain inadequacy as successful and as impactful as my career had been. Um, I felt that my life was short of what it could be. And I like to define that as being poor because see, for me, being poor is not does not mean having, not having food to eat or not having clothes to work, to, to, to wear. But being poor simply means that there's a difference between your ambition and your reality, you know. And for me, it was such a wide gap, you know, where I was, from where I was to where I wanted to be, there was such a wide span. And every day I went to work and inwardly I thought to myself, is that all there is to it, you know? And um, yeah, I, I, kept, I kept wondering, you know, whether there would be an, some opportunity somewhere. I changed careers many times, um, but every time somehow there was something was lacking i couldn't even place place a finger on it so that was the opportunity that was the hunger and that was the desire that that led me to the opportunity of world ventures and i and i love that nicholas because sometimes i think that people are almost afraid in order to target or recruit people that they believe in their might is more successful than them but that's such a true example that it doesn't matter how much success someone looks like they have on the outside, there's still a lot of people out there that need something that they feel is gonna give them the quality of life they dreamt of rather than what they're living right now. Um, so what advice would you give to people that right now maybe they have some people on their list that they're thinking of calling, but they're too afraid to call because they see them as successful. What advice would you give those people? Well, you know, I, 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 I'm, I'm the example. I mean, uh, my own upline, my friend who introduced me, uh, his name is Kabuti, he, he was afraid to talk to me. Uh, he, he for, for over a year, we had been good friends. We were talking regularly, but he, he could never surmount the courage to talk to me because in his mind, Nicholas would never be interested in this. Nicholas is doing just fine. Nicholas is holding big conversations with big people in society. Nicholas would poo-poo on this opportunity. Nicholas, no, there's no way Nicholas is going to go for. So if you're on this call, listen, you never know the prayer somebody is praying. Because I, we had prayed, me and my wife, we, we had prayed. My wife knew I was not happy. My wife knew I was not happy and I would sleep. I would sleep so much, you know, because I'm not happy, you know. And so in my spare time, there's nothing interesting to do. So you never, never know what prayer somebody is praying. Just show it to them. All you have to do is show it to them. If they say no, that's okay. You've done your part. But don't deny them because you may just be very well the answer to their prayer. Perfect. So it doesn't matter who's on your list. It doesn't matter how successful they are. If you got what we call a chicken list, <laughs> this is the time to summon up the guts and call them because who knows, there might be a Nicholas on someone else's list. And um, Nicholas, sometimes a lot of people see the fast stories such as yourselves. 
And unfortunately, sometimes people associate fast stories with luck. But of course, any leader knows that it's never luck. The harder you work, the luckier you get, right? Can you talk a little bit about what are some challenges you faced along the way and how did you deal with them to overcome them to still achieve your goal despite the challenges? Wow, challenges, my goodness. I wouldn't know where to start because I, I had so many. You know, to start with, there was that mental challenge. You know, that, that, that part of me saying, Nicholas, you are in a secure job, you are fine. Why go get into something that, that you are not even sure about? Because I had my doubts, you know, at the start. I, I wasn't sure. Is this true? Does this work? Is this legal? Is this, I, I don't know, but my whole head was full of doubt. So that was the first challenge I had to overcome. All right. Then, then it came to me signing up. When I decided I was going to sign up, and in fact, I signed up on the very day that this was shown me, but I didn't have the money. And you see, this is, this is what's interesting. This is the guy who is successful, who is doing just fine. And, you know, you have to pay for a gold sign up and you don't have the money. I did not. This was 22nd of December, you know, so I did not have the money. And so I did something that I would never, ever on an ordinary day do, which was to ask for a loan from a work colleague. Uh, this guy was a friend, all right, but I was almost senior to him. And, you know, to have to go to him and ask him for the money, it, it wasn't a good feeling. But somehow there was a spark inside of me that said, listen, this could very well be it. You know, I looked at the figures, I looked at the travel, and I said, maybe this is it, you know. So I took a loan from him, all right, and then I signed up immediately. Okay, so I signed up, um, I started inviting people. In my first week, I invited 125 people. There was such a passion and there was such a raging inside of me, I could literally not control myself. I, I was just completely crazy and I decided this is it you know and not only did I borrow for for the sign up I borrowed to buy a new laptop because I was using an official laptop and I was using uh, I was using just an official laptop for my office I needed one laptop to dedicate to this my phone was a bit slow it was an old phone I needed that so I borrowed to buy a laptop I borrowed to buy a new phone and guess what I there were distractions at home. You know, at home, my kids would always be playing with me and they are jumping all over me. So I needed to focus. I needed to fix, to have time. So I actually left home to stay in a hotel. <laughs> and, and this was all on borrowed money, all right? It wasn't a very expensive hotel, but it was still a hotel anyway, so I had to pay, you know. So then again, I went to this hotel room all by myself, quietly, and here was I making calls like I had lost my mind. And honestly speaking, there were times when I thought I had lost my mind. I, I wasn't sure what I was doing because you see, even my wife got to a point, she, she didn't understand because I mean, wh why would you leave home? I mean, at least stay at home and make those calls. But I wanted to free myself of every distraction. I wanted to give it my all. So in that week, I call it the week of passion. I just went after this thing like crazy. You know, and um, I started inviting one after the other. Talk about, talk about challenges. I had massive rejections. You know, there were some who thought I was too educated to be doing stuff like this. There were some who were shocked that I would invite them. You know, they were so, I mean, why, why would you even want, to? there were some who did not answer my calls. There were some who had so much respect for me, but the moment they saw the presentation, they would never answer my call anymore because I don't know what, what it is, but they just felt maybe I had stooped so low or I was engaging in something that was not right. So they'll never answer my calls anymore. And these things take a toll on you emotionally and psychologically. But what I have learned is that you should never buy into somebody's opinion, you know? You know, just go for it. Once you're convinced and you are convicted about something, you go for it because it's your life at the end of the day. It's your life. It's, it's nobody else's life. People can think what they want to think, but it is your life. You know, so yes, I had a ton of challenges, you know, right from financial, through the rejections, through the family. At a point, my wife was a little confused. So she called my mother out of concern. And my mother said, 
you know, well, they, sh they should just pray for me. And so they started praying for Nicholas. And, you know, so, so that I, I went through a ton of challenges, yeah. Wow, Nicholas. I mean, you know, I heard so much come through that because sometimes people tell themselves a story. I'm too young to do this. I don't have enough credibility. I have too much credibility. I don't have enough time. I don't have enough money. And the thing is, is that you had so many reasons why not, but you use the same reasons that sometimes people use to not do something you made those reasons the reason why you did something and you defied that and that's what makes you a leader and that's amazing so let me ask you something now you've achieved imd looking back in the last eight months eight and a half months what are the two of the three biggest highlights for you on this journey so far the last uh, few months okay so so let me let me first of all see i hit senior rep all right, in five weeks. Then I hit director in two months. Then I hit marketing director in four months. Then I hit regional marketing director in five months. Then I hit national marketing director in seven months. And then IMD in eight months. Now, when I look back on this journey, um, there are a number of remarkable things. One of the things I want to highlight is mentorship. Mentorship. You know, um, I, I have never seen a leader like Martin Indigo. You know, um, his humility and his persistence and his focus and his passion, truly unbelievable. And his selflessness, you know, this is a guy who is always ready to, you know, to, 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 to sacrifice and, and work with you in the trenches. You know, so really, really for me, mentorship is important. And I recommend that to everyone on this journey, you need mentorship, you need it. It's so important because when someone has gone ahead of you, they know the way, you know? And so one needs to be humble enough and hungry enough to appreciate the role of mentorship in their life. You cannot do this journey alone. Um, the second thing is passion. You know, I, I needed to succeed. I tell you, Efrosini, I mean, I. There was no way I was not going to succeed on this. When I saw this opportunity, in my first week, I sent a message to my dad. I said, dad, you know what? <laughs> I found something that's going to make me a millionaire in two years. And, you know, I, I thought he was going to recommend a psychiatrist, but <laughs> he did not. He just said, <laughs> he just said, wow, really, I'm excited for you. So, <laughs> so yeah. Um, so there was so much passion. Look, I there was no way I was going to fail on this. I told myself, I, I just have to, to, to do it. I have to win because it's, it's not easy. You know, it's not, it wasn't easy. And for so long, I had been hungry, you know, had been so hungry for this. So that the passion is there. I also want to highlight the never giving up attitude. You know, I had every, every reason to back away, but I fought so hard. You know, I, I really fought so hard. I fought everything and anything i fought the the voices in my own head you know the, the voices in my own head that was saying to me you can't do this yeah i fought that i kept pushing and i trusted that i could do it with god's help i knew i could do it and i kept pushing it so when i look back i look back with a lot of gratitude also to my entire team and to my upline and to the rest of the team and uh, to to everybody to team all guns blazing to Martin Indiho for the, for the mentorship and um, to Kabute for his contributions. And I, I'm really grateful. I'm full of gratitude. Yeah. When I look back. Thank you very much, Nicholas. Honestly, your story is so inspiring. And um, I have to say, guys, if you're watching this right now, this is being recorded. We will post this on YouTube. My recommendation to you is listen to it again and again and again, especially when you're going through challenges. And sometimes we see the success stories like Martin's, like Nicholas, and we go, oh, look, you know, they did it so quickly. Watch it again so you can be reminded that those that did it quickly didn't do it without obstacles. It's just their attitude towards the obstacles. Nicholas, congratulations from us to you. You deserve everything that you have achieved so far and so much more.
thank you for your servant leadership. And we look forward to seeing you around the world and celebrating on the stages of the world. Okay? Guys, thank you, thank we will you so post much. This. I appreciate it. Thank you. The honor is ours, champion. Guys, we'll post this on YouTube. We'll send to all your leaders so you can watch this and share this with your team. Here's my biggest invitation to you guys. No matter if you're brand new, you've been around the block a few times. The first thing you want to take away from this event is two things. One, if you're not booked for the view, go and book the view straight away. If you're not booked for the view, go and book the view straight away. Remember, Nicholas got pushed by his mentor, Martin, to book momentum. He couldn't really go to momentum, but he found a way to go to momentum anyway. And that's where a lot of things began because he saw the vision. So go and book the view, get your team booked for the view. That's number one. Number two, listen to your mentors and go out and take massive action. You heard Nicholas, he spoke to 120 people within a week. He found a way to make that happen. And if you really want to launch your business in a massive way, or if you're been around for a while and you want to relaunch your business in a massive way, it all comes down to putting a bunch of energy focused towards a goal. Don't look left. Don't look right. It's not too late to make 2020 your record year. We've got three months left until the end of the year. You can still change and make 2020 your best year regardless how it began. So thank you for tuning in, guys and see you digitally at The View.